I, from the bottom of my heart, dislike borders in Europe. Mr. President, President of the, uh, Vice President of the Commission, distinguished leaders of the political groups and members of the European Parliament. Europe is a thought that needs to become a feeling. I am honored to be back in this great house. I would like to thank Antonio for organizing the debates of the future of Europe and for the opportunity to participate. Today we can all together congratulate our German friends and all Europeans on the occasion of the German Unification Day. For my generation, this day symbolizes not only the end of division of Germany, but it also heralded the liberation of Eastern Europe and the start of eastward enlargement of the European Union. It made possible the starting of accession talks 20 years ago. It has been an amazing journey for our country, for Estonia. The role of the European Parliament in it has been remarkable. I would like to thank you, honourable members of the European Parliament, for your support. This year, Estonia celebrates the 100 years anniversary of our statehood. Like Germans in the east of the country, we had to wait and dream. For 50 years about freedom, rule of law and justice. I very clearly remember watching Finnish TV as this was our only connection to the free world. This is why I, from the bottom of my heart, dislike borders in Europe. So, Though still existing for member states who have fulfilled all criteria to join Schengen. Those that have been partly reintroduced following the migration crisis. Although I understand the concerns back then. And those that still may be erect should we, which, which I refuse to accept collectively fail in Brexit negotiations. Against this background, it is not hard to understand why Estonians have such a special emotional connection to Europe. I can only agree with the Irish singer Pono that Europe is not only an idea, but also a feeling and a destiny because our, uh, and I quote, values and aspirations make Europe so much more than just the geography. They go to the core of who we are as human beings and who we want to be. Ladies and gentlemen, compared to its sphere of territory and population in the world, Europe is small and diverse, but by sharing our sovereignty and pooling our strength by having common policies, we have been able to make a difference in the world. I believe that we all have shared interests in rule-based and effective multilateral order built on liberal values and democratic principles. We have common interest also in open, free and fair global markets. It is what 
the world expects from us. And it is what our citizens want. Because it is Europe that protects our values and freedoms against the turbulence of today's world. Europe's geographical ties and our global inter inter interdependence as world's largest trade dictate that it is vital to have a world that functions. We Europeans are all stronger together and I hope we will spare no efforts in securing our collective interests and the values in the world. Europe's core strength, it is diversity. Being European adds a rich lawyer to one's identity. Nothing represents this better than the fate of small nations in the European family. I would like to paraphrase former Estonian president Lennart Meri, who once said that small nations in Europe are the glue, the oil and the cement in the European construction. Therefore, allow me to express here modest enthusiasm when it comes to grand institutional designs in Europe, which could lead to lesser role of smaller nations. In our common institutions, less diversity will also res result in less Europe. Honourable members of the Parliament, ladies and gentlemen, today in this limited time frame, please allow me to focus on only some areas essential for Europe according to Estonia. First, precising unity with the EU. The key for our common future is our ability to keep the EU united and more forward with the EU's positive agenda. There is a saying that the best way to predict the future is to create it. Future is not something abstract or an other treaty change. We are building our future every day. We are doing this by providing answers to concrete con concerns of our citizens. And we are possible building connections that bring Europeans closer together, human, physical and professional connections. Europeans also expect us to tackle transformational challenges that are too big for a single member state, such as Europe defence, climate change and digital transformation. We will also have to find answers to global population growth and migration triggered by these changes. I therefore hope for ambitious multi-annual financial framework that reflects these challenges. New multi-annual financial framework is actually the best indicator of how we will see our common future. I agree with President Macron that the European Union depends on the feeling of unity. But as we know, unity does not have to mean uniformity. Sometimes we should simply recognize our different views without compromising on the same values. I find different levels of direct taxes in member states perfectly normal. I also feel that with European budget of the size of only one percentage of GNI, fundamental decisions or restrictive nature can be made a national or even local level through social dialogue. At the same time, we must have credible framework vital for our common future, like the spending 2% of our GDP to keep Europe safe, or aiming at expenditure level of 3% of GDP on research and innovation. 
Also, we expect Europe to be, to be big in big things. But at the same time, it has to be excellent in details. Without standards and fine details, the single market of capital markets union would simply not function. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, we are now trying to find consensus when declining on the core elements on how to manage migration. It is difficult, but we all realize that short-term measures will only bring short-term solutions. All of us need to show solidarity in the way that suits best our common purpose and each member state's particularities. The key, is, the key in decreasing irregular migration is to work with third countries. We must use all the instruments that our trade, visa and development policies offer. New Africa-EU alliance proposed by President Juncker to support job skills and private investments in Africa definitely serves long-term effects. Estonia pulls its weight here. Last November, I signed e-government cooperation agreement between Estonia and African Union. Estonia is geographically designed from Africa, but digital world does not recognize distance. Secondly, it is important to maintain and strengthen EU's influence in global economy. I cannot imagine a better example than the single market to prove that we are bigger and we are stronger together, but it still remains unfinished. Take, for example, the field of services, while the sector continues to grow unlike anything else, especially in digital domain. We are far from using its full cross-border potential. For example, public services remain essentially national. My good colleague, Mark Rutte, called the services market the elephant in the room when standing in front of you here in June. I understand him well, and I always worry when did talk, take talking about making of the single market our economic engine become a taboo. It is high time that we set ourselves new goals in building the single market. Honorable ladies and gentlemen, success is creating effective artificial intelligence could be the biggest event in the history of our civilization, or the worst. We just don't know a famous quote by Stephen Hawking in the field of artificial intelligence, the race is definitely on. Everybody is keen on exploring and developing strategies and reaping the benefits while we are still struggling to make it work. Up on entiring from the age of intervention in, into the age of implementation of AI, Europe has to reinforce our values and lead technological change in public and in private sector. We need to progress in the areas of free movement of data, the data economy and artificial intelligence. In the world of hybrid Warware, cybercrime and fake news, security is spy cyberspace should come by design and go hand in hand with emerging technologies. We need to build data integrity into systems to be able to guarantee that the sensors, inputs and computing of the robotic system are not compromised. We need to develop strong digital identities in order to be able to distinguish real persons from fake, unfriendly pots. We need to establish practice with a strong professional spirit 
on keeping AI open and transparent. I am very pleased with the Commission proposal resulting from Thailand Digital Summit last year, especially our commitment to invest in the technological and social readiness throughout the new budget. It is time to adopt proposals to complete the digital single market. And enable digital transformation, the world will not wait. Thirdly, it is important to maintain and enhance internal and external security. All Euro parameters surveys have shown that our people are most concerned about security. Our lo long-term focus should be on prevention of crime and illegal activities at our borders. High level of border and costumes. Surveillance ensures security throughout Europe. Common standards and investments into both technical and operational features in border surveillance are required. Only then, only then can we realistically access what to expect from the 10,000 European border cars that John Claude has proposed. Also, effective control of people and goods at out external borders demands reliable databases that can communicate with each other. We do not need to collect the same data in into different information systems. We just have to make them able to share the information. Interoperability of EU-wide database by 2020 is the only way forward. We must also explore how to develop better synergies between the internal security, border control and costumes information system. And it is the same that also Romania and Bulgaria would benefit from membership in Schengen area. Honourable members of the European Parliament, the call for European nations to show that they take their security seriously has been around from, for a long time and clearly. It will not go away. This is not merely a question about maintaining our increasing our military capabilities. This is ultimately a question about how serious Europe is over its role in its immediate neighborhood and in the world in general. How serious, we, how serious are we about our transatlantic partnership with the United States. Europe that protects has to maintain a strong relationship with our global partners. In addition to the European defense cooperation, it is inevitable to preserve the transatlantic unity. Europe cannot deal with the global security risks alone. For the European Union, this means going beyond its current role as a regulatory superpower and start supporting the developments as well as development of more traditional instruments of foreign and security policy. Therefore, an increased defense cooperation among the EU member states is very welcome. This will lead to increased defense spending and a large number of commonly usable capabilities. At the same time, NATO will remain the bedrock of collective defence in Europe. And our aim should be a mutual reinforcing relationship between the EU and NATO. Mr. President, the final point I would like to make, we need to strengthen the European feeling and fight populism. We are working hard in the EU to make our citizens feel well. However, 
In recent youth forum in Estonia, students said that even their teachers were not able to explain the European Union. Upcoming European Parliament elections give us politicians perfect opportunity to explain, to explain our decisions. European Union has brought so many opportunities that people nowadays seem to take for granted. We have to speak about the benefits of the single market and single currency to our businesses, about free movement to our people, about Erasmus for our students. I very much appreciate the structured dialogues on the future of Europe initiated by the French President Emmanuel Macron, the President of the European Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker, and the President of this great house, Mr. Antonio Tajani. Working for better Europe that benefits citizens is a daily work. This also includes taking responsibility for the decisions and compromises made in the EU and showing very clearly that we own these decisions. The actions taken after the Bratislava and Rome summits already seems to have positive results and enjoy support by the people. More than two-thirds of EU citizens feel that the EU membership has been beneficial to their country, the best results since 1983. To summarize, external pressure and crisis have always pushed the EU forward and motivated member states and institutions to cooperate. Our common response to the Russian aggression against Ukraine, to the Patklan terrorist attack, or if we will, to the Eurozone crisis, is an example of solidarity and example of common values. European Union as a community of values and, of course, shared interests, has to have the means to stand up for the respect of individual freedoms and fundamental rights, for multilateral and rule-based order to tackle the challenges to our security, to our peace and well-being. I believe that our citizens understand this while we engage in the negotiations over the next multi-annual financial framework. The fundamentals of the European Union are constantly disputed by the people, by, by the member states and also by third states. Our union is therefore politically fragile. This means that we need a self-confident, reassuring union that protects its citizens and its members. We also need citizens and member states that, that are passionate about the union and everything it stands for as a family of peoples and states. And there must be more of us. I hope, I really hope that in 10 years from now, I can listen to a colleague from any of the current candidate countries in the same role that I am standing here today. Now I would like to conclude in my mother tongue, Estonian. It means you need your microphones. Kallid parlamendi liikmed, ma tahan teid tänada selle eest, et Euroopa olevik ja Euroopa tulevik ei jäta teid kedagi ükskõikseks. Alles täna siin seistes teie ees. Ma mõistan täielikult, milline privileeg ning vastutus oli Eestil ja minul eelmisel aastal, kui oli meil 
au ja võimalus juhtida Euroopa Liidu nõukogu tööd. Eesti kirjanik Anton Hansen Tamsaare on öelnud, et tööd tehes kasvab armastus. Nii see on. Euroopa oli, Euroopa on ja Euroopa jääb minu südamesse. Ma tänan teid.